understanding my place in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. When I was a freshman in college, sometime during orientation week, I attended a session about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I sat there shocked and horrified, learning for what felt like the first time about the genocide of Palestinians. The group that put together this event had organized a protest for the next day, and I felt so deeply compelled to attend. But having grown up in a Protestant Christian home, having heard about Israel throughout my life, likely more times than it's mentioned in the Bible, that would be 2,319 individual times, according to the KJV Bible. I felt confused. So I called my parents that night, hoping to seek some clarity and guidance about the conflict I was feeling internally and to talk about everything that I'd learned. For the most part, I was met with warnings not to protest against God's chosen people because his ways are mysterious and above our own. Christian Zionism. The belief that the return of the Jewish people to the Holy Land and the establishment of the State of Israel is a prerequisite for the second coming of Jesus Christ. I've been raised within the walls of Christian spaces and churches long enough to know that pious displays and beliefs are often a facade erected to obscure obscenities. Faith used to excuse fierce displays of authoritarian tendencies. I spent four years getting college educated in one of the most liberal cities in America. Shout out to Ithaca, New York. But sometimes, don't you ever get tired of deconstruction? Don't you ever wonder if the constant retrospective of postmodernist thought has you spinning your wheels in place whilst life happens around you? Whilst Westerners continue to pontificate on whether an issue can even be discussed because both sides this and there's a convoluted history that, the United States has $146,245 million in aid obligations from the years 1946 to 2020 as of a report from September 2020 by the Library of Congress. Oh, not to mention that this doesn't include the defense funding provided to Israel, which according to USAID, as of March 2020, would be 236 billion inflation-adjusted dollars. Israel, with the help of what is now entirely military aid, has become one of the most technologically sophisticated militaries in the world. Whilst you twiddle your fingers questioning the morality of both sides, the Israeli defense forces are enabling the theft of Palestinian homes. As the child of a land passed about between three colonial powers, I can't help but wonder how many people twiddle their fingers at the morality of educating the savages. That was just one of the many things that have pulled me out of the cult of Christianity. The tool that was used so often as a tool of oppression by those claiming to save us. The older I've gotten, the more I've come to realize that faith has no place in the oppression of other people. Faith is not a good enough excuse for the genocide of a people's. This is why that one particular exchange with my parents stands as a linchpin to the dismantling of my faith. Oh, the callousness of Christianity. I have no interest in a fate that locks me out of the pearly gates. Just because I stand up for the oppressed and persecuted, I have no need for an afterlife secured by shutting my eyes to human suffering. I have no want to associate myself with a faith so transparent in when it chooses to claim oppression. Look, I'm not saying that everyone needs to up and stick their noses in everyone else's business, but there's a black and white when it comes to the taking of innocent lives. There's a right and a wrong. We've seen enough lately to know that our struggles are all intertwined, that silence is violence, and nobody is ever really impartial against the perpetuation of violence. You either fight it or, you know, you perpetuate. Especially if you are a Westerner or a Christian, you're probably already supporting one side over the other without even realizing it. I can understand the feeling of helplessness that comes with being but a small voice in a world that is run by those who refuse to hear us after all what can you do demand to be heard and when you are make sure that before you make a claim of there being two sides to a problem or attacks on civilians being justified under the progress towards fulfillment of a prophecy think just for a moment whether you're just making excuses for state-sanctioned ethnic cleansing under a different name
Thanks so much for listening to this and for giving of your time and energy. If you have any questions about the facts and figures I used, I have a link to the Congressional Research Survey study in the description of this video. If you want more personal content, video essays, and poetry, please do hit the like button, sub, and click the bell icon to be notified when I post next. Remember that sharing is caring, and sharing this video does a lot to help get it in front of other people's eyes. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, thanks for your time, thanks for being you, and until next time, peace.